Welcome to Chewing the Cud with Lee Robertson and Mike Benyon Rowe. Here's slices of toast, butter, jam. In the toaster, French toast. That's all that needs to be said. What have you got for us today, Mike? French toast is bread that is dipped in fried in butter. Distortion going on. Blah, 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 what blah, you've blah. got there is a poor man's top pop tart. Let's move on, Mike. You brought it back up. So I need to clarify it. With clarified butter that you fry your eggy bread in. You just call it eggy bread, don't you? I don't have eggy bread. You don't have eggy bread. I'm not a child, Mike. <laughs> no, you just have a <laughs> pop tart. They call it French toast. And they go, anyway. Ooh, let's see. Every time I take a bite. <laughs> see, that I can believe you do it as well. I can actually 100% believe you doing that. Ooh, where we the see you. <laughs> oh, oh, sir. No, no, no. I'm so European. <laughs> oh, Nicole, Papa. <laughs> uh, anyway, I've got a story about the end of time, apparently. And then I've got a story about a warning for those who insist on wearing Crocs. And then I bring you something glorious in that science, that is. And we even have a game to play. On screen now, you can see our social media contact info. Just look for at the Cud TV. And as people's names go along the bottom of the screen, we go over to Lee and the showbiz. <laughs> okay, first bit of showbiz news this week. Uh huh. Have you have you read the Britney Spears book yet? Yes. Have you? Yeah. You haven't at all. Have you? Don't ask me a question, then question my answers. Because you lie a lot, so I'm not okay, sure... Okay, yes, size you... doesn't matter. It's what you do with it that counts. Anyway, Britney Spears' honestly. memoir, The Woman in Me... Uh-huh. Really, somebody should have helped with that title. Um, it's, has, it's been out for a couple of weeks now. People are raving about it. It's caused a lot of heated uh -huh. discussion on social media. But we're, gonna, we're not going to talk... We're not going to touch on that, because that's not really what we're about. Well, it is, but, you know, I wanted to talk about something else. Um, so in the book, she talks about how the LGBTQ plus community has always had her back mm -hmm. um, throughout her entire career. Um, so she's talking about, for me, she said, it's all about love, unconditional love. Um, my gay friends were always very protective of me, maybe because they knew that I was kind of innocent. So we've got she's a picture... not that innocent. Well, not now. So I did that. Uh, yeah. Nah, um, she innocent. said, I'm not dumb but I'm way too kind. And I think that a lot of the gay guys around me took us on a supportive role so I could, and I could feel it on stage when they were beside me. Um, here's a picture of her with Adore Delano. Because um, the drag queens like her. The drag queens like a bit of, of, of Britney. She's basically, what she's like saying is, I thought, if I thought I didn't do my best performance or I didn't kind of hit my marks, they were always there to kind of say, you know, you did good. But it's that kind of like the gays going, you're amazing, when she'd like staggered off stage and fallen in a bucket. Because we like that sort of thing. <laughs> yeah. Um, so she's yeah. kind of like saying her favourite nights out ever mm -hmm. have been at gay bars. Um, she's talking about one time at a gay bar in Europe, she went with the dancers, they went dancing, everybody was like protecting a circle around her. Um, <laughs> It was a gay boss, so that wasn't happening. Um, what wasn't that? I knew what you were thinking. What was I thinking? Circle jerk. No, I wasn't actually. Were you not? No. You lie. I was thinking the dancers are around us so that they can peel off and have a shag in the toilets. Oh, 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 no, okay. That's actually what I was thinking there, no. but yeah. yeah. Oh, no. She said that the club played um, great electro music, danced until six o'clock in the morning. So she and... was JY then? I don't know. In Europe, is there a JY in Europe? Okay. I know I, that, we're, but she'd, people tend to say the UK. No, they, can't, they say Europe, because there's only us that say the UK and the rest of Europe. The rest of the world knows that we're part of Europe. It's Britney Spears. She got the UK like that. Europe. Um, anyway, she recalled a night in Italy where she went to showcase where some drag acts were doing her songs, and she said it was so amazing. They were so beautiful. Um, and in a moment, I could tell that they loved to perform. Um, um, now, talking of drag queens. Talking of drag queens. <laughs> now, she, she has kind of a bit of a history of people coming out to her. Mm -hmm. So this guy that she's with here is Lance Bass from oh. NSYNC, who famously came out as gay mm -hmm. um, at the height of the, the band's fame. 
she was the mm. one that he... What? The height of the band's fame. Well, just as they were on the slide. Just just as they were about to go, we're not together anymore, we're taking a hiatus, that's when he came out. Yeah, well, he was the first one to tell her. Okay. He was, he was the, the first, first one to tell, tell her. her he was gay, and she was like, oh, that's... He's probably trying to get into Justin Timberlake's pants. <laughs> Justin Timberlake's, mm -mm, we're not to talk about him. He's not, he's not in favour in the book. Uh, and really? also, yeah. Her ex is not her in favour. Her ex mm, doesn't come across as particularly very nice in the book. But who could... also, uh -huh. H from Steps. He came out to Britney Spears on her private jet. Was he supposed to be there? He was. The Did other members of Steps him? were not happy. Steps supported Britney Spears back in the day. Mm -hmm. And um, she took a shine to him. And said, oh, you can come on my private jet. I don't know if she talks like that. Um, and, Probably not. And he went, okay. And then the rest of them had to go on the bus and they were not happy about it because they were on an old bus. Really Spears, friend to the gays. Um, next bit of news. <laughs> Ella Henderson. Because I just wanted, in the book, she talks about the, the moment in the snake, that iconic snake moment. Yes. Have you read it? No. Okay. Are I you... want to spoil it for you. Oh, okay. Was it, was it a real snake? It was a real snake. Okay. Did it wee on her? Yes, it weed on her. Snakes do wee. They do, they do, but that's not the story. Oh, did no. she? It's okay. okay. No, I don't want to spoil it for you. So oh, okay. Read it. Okay. So if I said to you, if I sang this to you, what memories would it bring back, Mike? <laughs> About an hour and a half ago, when the gallery said one of them was really hungover. <laughs> well, apparently, uh -huh. we're getting a new a new version of the Woe Body Form song. And body advert. Confidence. Body form for you! <laughs> and Ella Henderson. <laughs> how can you not see that in a normal voice? Because that's how she sang it originally. Okay. Whoa, body form! Do you not remember? <laughs> Do you not remember? I'm just loving the deafening silence from the gallery right now. I think they turned us off. I think one of them's taken the headset yeah. off and gone, I'm leaving. So, <laughs> so Ella Henderson. Uh -huh has been commissioned or hired or whatever to do uh, a new version of the World Body Form song. Um, I'm not going to say <laughs> World Body Form song. Well, that's his title, World Body Form. Um, so she's X Factor, dead successful, like nine UK top ten singles. Um, so she's agreed to record the new jingle with lyrics to reflect how the world has moved on since the original advert. You probably won't remember, back in the 80s, they had this with like women jumping out of aeroplanes and riding horses along beaches and stuff. And it was all very kind of, it was only women. Um, so obviously now things have changed and it's not just cis women that have periods. So um, she's she's kind of, it's kind of like a whole a kind of thing of destigmatizing it. Good. Um, and it's not, so she's not going with the whole traditional um, <laughs> it's been given a dance donk beat. You put a donk on it. You put a donk nah, on it. Sick. Um, so uh, that should. A reference. It's a very niche reference. Um, that is the original singer on the screen, um, who Spears. coincidentally ended up being Ella Henderson's um, mother, singing Stanley. tutor. Oh, okay. Um, back in the day, um, she's got Stevie Lange or Stevie Lang. Whichever way you want to say it. Um, she's, lost, she's got a look of Britney about her. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, that is that should be out now. Okay. The new advert and the new song. I don't know if you can download that song. I don't I don't think she... I'm not going to do it again. I am. Whoa, I won't do it again. I promise. <laughs> Whoa, buddy, <four. laughs> I made no such promise. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, last bit of showbiz news. Uh -huh. Miriam Margulies. Now, yes. we are, I have a bit of a love-hate. Not love-hate, but I, I generally sometimes find her very funny. Other times, I think she does say stuff to antagonise situations. She does, she's, she's definitely the mischievous old granny. I, I, sometimes I think she plays in it and, and says, I, I've said that because I'm old and I'm allowed to. Yeah. And sometimes, no, that doesn't make... No. Anyway... Unfortunately, the news over the past couple of weeks, Matthew Perry from Friends sadly died. Um, she's been on a number of chat shows with him in the past, and she's talking about now how she's she's on Graham Norton a couple of years ago. Um, there's this clip on YouTube where she tells this story, which absolutely horrifies 
um, Matthew. So she, 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 it's, it's from 2016, and she's on the show with Matthew Perry and actress Gemma Arterton, and they're kind of getting along and vibing and chatting until... She tells this story of when she was, she remembers when she was younger, she met the actor Laurence Olivier, waited outside the, the stage, stage door of the theatre, and she said, sparing no details, he came out, I remember so distinctly that I started to cream my knickers. Um, and a horrified Matthew Perry beside her, who up until that point had been listening very politely and kind of laughing, froze in horror, and went... And she was like, the other... Graham Norton thought it was absolutely... This is her telling the story. I creamed my knickers. Um, Perry wasn't o overly impressed. He kind of went, that is the most horrifying story I've ever heard and will will be with me for a very long time because that was awful. Um, she she said, I could feel I could feel it. She said, I could feel it. It went all funny. It's true. Uh, I creamed my knickers. That's not your coming out of my pussy. Was that something I said? Oh, yes, it was. It was. <laughs> it was. Stick around. <laughs> <laughs> Stick around because after this is Mike and the Buzz. <laughs> You're watching Chewing the Cud with Lee and Mike. Now let's go over to Mike and the Buzz. <laughs> McDonald's. Are you a fan of their work? I know I shouldn't be, because they're dirty. Um, and they're not very healthy. But I will have one from time to time. What's your go-to? It's a Big Mac. Big Mac? Take out the gherkins, or pre-order and go... Boop, 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 boop. Just ask, you know, when you place your order anyway, you can just say no gherkins. I, I don't talk to people. I do it on the screen. Oh, you go into the shop? Yes. And I get a number and I wait there. Like at like at Argos. And then when they call it out, I just snatch my bag and run. <laughs> Go, Meh! And then like that, and then I'm out. Yes. So, yeah. Big Mac, okay. Yeah. Um, well, this is a story about a gentleman who found, who basically had a cheeseburger. Okay. In his car. Okay. For several years. Oh. And um it, it was still still a cheeseburger. Did it, did it infect his hand? Because huh? does it make his hand does, go mouldy? That's the two. Oh, okay. It's a hand to do. Um, but he hit it with a hammer, um, and it shattered into pieces. It looks like a bit of black pudding. The cheese is still cheese coloured. And it, it doesn't look like it's aged at all. Well, the burger does. No, it just looks a bit darker. No, it looks like it's it's a it's, it looks like it's been charcoaled. Um. <laughs> Are, are those ma is that maggots? No, it's lots left of the lettuce. Oh, uh, ooh. <laughs> so where would lettuce? Where would it? <laughs> where would salad? Get it away from me! No, I just ooh, where would it? Where had it been? Just in his car. Where though? In the car. Was it like under a seat? Forgotten yeah, about? The, oh, okay, it, it wasn't like right. it was just on the dashboard for <laughs> where, seven years. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I won't get around to that one. Now. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's not Care Bear if it's your car. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So yeah, f found it. Give it a smash, and it, it shattered into pieces. Did he just have a it's little you. bit? You would, though, wouldn't you? I wouldn't. You would. No, I wouldn't. You perhaps not the perhaps not the patty. <laughs> <laughs> Why was my patty worthy? <laughs> you nibble. You'd have a nibble on the bread. You would. You would. I bet you would. <laughs> Somebody applauding outside, going, "Yes, you would. Yes." Um, no, you wouldn't. Yeah, you would. Okay, I wouldn't. A tiny little nibble. No, I wouldn't put on that the bread because it's not mold. The bread's not moldy, which is concerning. Oh well, yeah. That's the concerning thing. It doesn't go moldy at all. And that's plastic cheese anyway, so it's going to last forever. Yeah, that's worrying. You would though, wouldn't you? You'd have a full-on bite. No, it, no, because that that looks rank. That looks rancid. I would, I would sniff it. I would sniff it. I would go, and then perhaps I'd go, and then touch it with my tongue. I would. And then I'd shove it up my ass. No, I wouldn't. I was going to say, this is this, this you with a penis or a burger here. <laughs> Sniff it, touch it with my tongue and then... Okay. Yeah. So the moral of the story is... They eat your like, burgers before eat they... Eat burgers before they get become mummified. Okay. Yeah. Did, did McDonald's have feedback for this? No. No.
Is the answer is no. Okay. Um, because it was just a man that found it, so. Did you find anything else? Yeah, I did. A small child? A small child, <laughs> a Barocca, and um, an Uzi. Oh, okay. Nice. Um, but yeah, moving on. You don't, you won't like the story. Okay. Contact lenses. Okay. Because you don't like contact. It's, but it's not that I don't like them. I don't, I choose not to. I don't, I personally do not like inserting things into my eyeballs or over my eyeballs. Okay. Well, it's a story about a doctor who's um, basically helped someone that was wearing contacts. I'm not, I don't like this story. I don't know about <laughs> Is it that she had like 57 pairs yeah. of uh, lenses in her eyes? She's not had 57 lenses. In her How eyes. many did she have? 23. In? Not looking at it. <laughs> not looking at it because it's disgusting. I've seen this. Okay. I can't, I'm not looking okay, at it. Okay, don't screen. look then. Don't I'm look. Not looking at it. It's fine. Don't look. And if it comes on there, <laughs> I'm not looking at it there either. Okay. So yeah, it's a doctor who's forced to remove 23 contact lenses that have been stuck in a woman's eye and had never seen anything like it. Um, this lady is from um, Newport Beach in California. So what did she do? She couldn't get them out, so she just said, I'll just put another one in. Pop, kept popping them in. And did, did that not affect her vision in any way? It went blurry. She couldn't see. She thought she needed a new prescription. And as they're doing that eye test, they went, oh, no. It's not... Is she a bit stupid? I'm not saying yes. Um, but, yeah, the doctor basically had to just, just get them out. They were looking at it and went, oh, no, there's one there. So they got a Q-tip. Her eyes not like out here. No, because they're very thin. Cartoon and, eyes. And they go round. So they don't just like sit at the front. It's not like putting them on top of each other. They've gone underneath and up. Oh! So they've gone like, you know, up here. Oh! Right. So if you're looking to that, they've gone... I don't want to do it. So just, if you, if you're doing I that. don't want to look at it. It's my eye. It's not... I don't want it. to. And so they have to pull them all out. So they had to use a cotton wool bud just to oh! and pull them down. That is disgusting. So she could feel them moving. I bet they stunk. 23... Well, no, because they'd be sterile because you're in your eye. No. But one after the 27 well, pairs or whatever. Look, look, I'm not looking green. at them. I'm not that looking at green. them. I'm not looking at them. Yeah. I don't want to. 23 pairs. I'm not looking at that one either. I'm not looking at it. That's fine. I don't look enjoy it. it. Don't there was a thing on there was something on Facebook and I thought, what's you know when you get like the stories and you think, oh what's that weird? And you click on it and you think, why have I and there was a there was a it's not, not human, it was a lizard. And you know how lizards like shed their skin? Uh -huh. Well this lizard hadn't hadn't been able to shed the skin on its eyeball. Right. And they peeled it off. Mm -hmm. Oh, that was disgusting. You watched it all the way through, though, didn't you? Yeah. And then they pulled it out, and it was horrible. Right when they pull, um, they do the, the Dr. Pimple Popper kind of thing, and they dig in and pull I out. I don't enjoy them. Ingrown hairs and things. I don't You can't stop them. watching, though, can you? I don't watch Dr. Pimple Popper. It makes me sick. No, but that kind of, when you get a hair, and you see them pull it out, and it keeps going, and they end up having no, to No, because I don't watch them. I only watched that doing. lizard thing because I wasn't quite sure what it was. Okay. And then I realised... So I didn't enjoy that, Mike, thank you. Okay. And if you've got pictures of gross things in and out of eyeballs or popping zits and things, please share it with us at The Could TV. And that brings us nicely to our story of the week. Now, we just talked about eyeballs, mm. right, and me knowing that that triggers you. So you can think what the next thing's going to be about. Something else that triggers you, maybe. Crocs. Do you like wearing Crocs, Lee? <laughs> Can we just let us just can I just have a little story here? Let's have a little story. Oh, sorry. So initially when Crocs came out, mm -hmm. I poo-pooed them. You did. I was like, what are those? Mm -hmm. I'm not wearing those. Mm -hmm. And then I got a pair. Mm -hmm. And they're the comfiest thing I've ever had on my feet. And where did you get that pair from? I think you may have bought me them. Bought them for a birthday present as a joke. And I wore them. And you wore them. They were bright yellow. They were, and I bejazzled them. You bejazzled them and wore them and I'm like, what the yeah. hell have I done? Now can I just say? If I give you rat poison, please don't eat it. They, were, they are very comfortable. I don't wear them anywhere else apart from the house and this studio. Mm -hmm. I do not go out into the world in them. Okay. For that is inappropriate. What colour shoes are you wearing right now? I'm wearing Crocs. What colour are they? They're black. So I bought you a pair of yellow ones. I bought a second pair. <laughs> you bought a second pair. I like to, I like to, I like to you know, accessorise to what I'm wearing. <laughs> uh -huh. I'm gonna get, I'll get one off. <laughs> Will you? I've put little gibbets in it. How beautiful. They're very, very comfortable. Would I go shopping in them? No. Would I go anywhere else in them? No. Do I wear socks with them? Yes. It's cold. My feet get chilly. Then wear shoes. 
No, because they're comfortable shoes. If I'm not going anywhere special, <gasps> how rude! They're very comfortable, just to slip on. <laughs> Eloquently take them off as you just did. I'm gonna put it back on. So yeah. You're gonna make the noise to put it on as well. <laughs> no, I, I can manage that. So I put them back on. Oh, okay. Yeah. Right, okay. Uh, well, this is an air hostess. Okay. Uh, who's basically told people to stop wearing Crocs on planes. Why? Because they're dangerous. Why? They're hideous for a start. Um, uh, that was, that's not a croc. That's a flip-flop. Well, it's sandals or crocs. So it's it's either or. Stop wearing loose-fitting shoes. But I'm picking on crocs because I hate See, them. your feet swell when you're on a plane. No, they don't. Yes, they do. Old people's feet swell when they're on a plane. <laughs> or in a hospital bed for a long period of time. Dean, do your feet ever swell when you're on a plane? All the time, yeah. Paul, who's significantly younger than all of us, do, do your feet swell on the plane? No is the answer there. <laughs> so it's an old person thing. Um, so what you need there is you need some support bandage, you know, the tight... Oh, well, I wear flight socks. Why am I not surprised by this? Because that's the sensible thing to do. You don't want a deep, deep vein thrombosis the minute you get off the plane and you go into to Terra Molinos or whatever. You don't want to ruin your holiday. Horribly does. It's already ruined. <laughs> but yeah, because they are so loose fitting and so easy to get in and out, right? In case of a, a, an emergency landing, unscheduled arrival, as that's also known, yeah. um, then they're dangerous to get try and get on the plane with, get off the plane with, because they're loose fitting shoes. My croc has never slipped off my foot. We've noticed. <laughs> that is, did you notice? Know <laughs> <laughs> I don't really agree. No, that's what, what she said. Um, also, if they come loose what, during a, an unscheduled landing um, and they fly off your foot, they can then cause harm, harm to other people as they fly around the cabin. Can they? They weigh like an ounce. Oh, an ounce? Flo I mean, give might me a, weigh give me a, a couple of kilograms give me, full, because they're full of give me a gibbets crop, and right. jewels. I'm going to throw this at your head. You tell me if it hurts. <laughs> Go on, then. <laughs> I wouldn't do that because, well, as you've said, it's full of well, spikes. You, you could say that about any shoe. No, because they're, they're, as you said, easy to get on and off. Well, look, just put the, just put that bit down. Then they're secure. That's, that's the thing that stops them from slipping stuff. off. So, yeah. I don't agree with her. I don't agree you with her. You don't agree with her. I think she's just being, I think she's just being, um, I think she's just being, um, what do they call it? Correct. Um, no, I think she's being discriminatory. Discriminatory. Mm. Crocs are now a protected characteristic. If if they if if they make your feet comfortable on a flight, that's fine. But yeah, that's all from the buzz this week. Oh, thank you, Mike. That's uh, interesting to know that we are now being discriminated against. Croc wearers unite. Um, stay with us because we've got our game of the week. <laughs> You're watching Chewing the Cud. Now, this week we're going to be playing Uza Kazoo, and that's for this man, this man here, who is a facsimile, but not quite Mike. You can't ad lib. You said you would <laughs> yourself. I would. Game of the week. So, Mike, what are we playing this week, and what's going to happen? When you introduced it. Oh, yeah. The kazoo. I did. We need to talk about your medication. Yes. I'm going to blow a tune into a kazoo. Mm, yeah. You're going to try and get what it is. Yeah. We'll get it wrong, think it's something else, and then get angry at me. And then 12 minutes will go past that we'll never get back again. Yeah. Okay. Ready? Yes. Is it? Don't you wanna wanna do 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 do? Don't you wanna wanna? But I don't know the name of the song. No, it's not. No. No. Is it? Giving up, giving in. <laughs> no. It? No. Oh, don't know then. Britney Spears. What was it? I've forgotten now. What was it? Oh. If you don't get any, what's it? If you don't get any cock. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
Ah. Oh. He doesn't know. I forgot. It was. He doesn't it was, know it is. It was gone. the one with Slave for You. I'm a slave uh, for you. Oh, uh, yeah. That's the one I was doing. See? That one. Okay. That's the one. Yeah. Did not get that one. So many British Spears songs in my head, I just, they all got a bit mashed up together. Okay, next one. <laughs> <laughs> down, down, down. It's automatic by the Pointer Sisters. It was indeed. Covered by other artists. It was indeed, correct, yes. The gallery love that song. They do, it's one of their favourites. It is one of their favourites. Okay, next one. Yeah. <laughs> Do you know what? What? I think that might be. Uh huh. Oh, body foam! Body foam for you! It was, yeah, yeah. That yeah. hurt my throat, that. Hurt my epiglottis. Oh. I hope you haven't got that out on screen. <laughs> You're getting complaints. Look it away again. Okay, next one. <laughs> I don't know it. Is there something in your mouth? Is it a pube? What are the fucking gems? I'm firing to my face. I tell you, they get everywhere, those. <laughs> We're dazzling, it's not for Can the Can kill me with gems, you? Not for the week. Not for the week glue. Um, it was Psycho by Ava Max. Oh, I don't know that. It's modern music, you wouldn't. I don't know it. It ain't necessarily so. What? It ain't necessarily so. Do, 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 do. No, I don't know it. It was Venus by Banana Rama. Oh, that didn't sound anything like it. In my head. <laughs> well, perhaps if you'd played like that, I would have understood it. Really, didn't. That's what I did. Okay. Next one. Is it Gypsies, Tramps and Thieves by Cher? It was indeed, yeah. Oh! How did you get that one with I the don't know. Sing along to it. <laughs> oh dear, okay. Next one. Keeping you up, love. I don't know. <laughs> it's a big yawn just randomly. I don't, I don't know it. It's black velvet. Oh, I didn't hear it. Didn't huh? get that. Didn't get it. No. No. Do you want me to just do the choruses from that one? Yeah. Don't try with the. Don't try with the verses. Okay. Next one. <laughs> Is it Stop Right Now by the Spice Girls? No. It was a Shoop Shoop song by Cher. No. Not, no, it wasn't. It was. It was in the chorus. I do think he should have sounded then. Sorry, are you saying something? Because you don't pay attention. You're having a little dream every time I put something in my face. <laughs> like my ex. Right. 
Is it The Power of Love by Jennifer Rush? No. Oh, it sounded it was like a it. Circle of Life by Elton John. Oh, but do you know what? what? Those two songs sound very similar. <laughs> the power of love is like the circle of life. Oh, Elton John ripped her off. No, he didn't. Elton John ripped that off song, Jennifer Rush. The first Page. song that you sang was The Circle of Life with different lyrics. <laughs> Not The Power of Love. The power of love. Did it circle? Life. You're just singing the wrong lyrics to Ed Sheeran again. I think they may have to investigate that. Okay. Ed Sheeran style. He didn't copy anyone. Apparently. Next one. Hmm. <laughs> Is it by the rivers of Babylon by Boney M? It was, yeah. Was it? No, it was no, Adele, it was. hello. It was who? <laughs> Adele, hello. Where did you wear? How? I'm doing the I'm doing the choruses as you asked. They didn't sound anything like the chorus to Hello. Hello from the other side. <laughs> <laughs> no, see, I'm just getting by the rivers of Babylon. <laughs> Maybe that's a you issue. <laughs> I know that one. That's, that's raw, raw Rasputin by Boney Ann. Yeah, it was your right one. They're your, they're your comeback, aren't they? They had one. They? they had one with that song. What song was that? Rasputin. Was that was that recent? Yeah. Okay. The duo come back, so you know what this, what you're doing here. Right, next one. <laughs> The Dancing Queen. Dancing Queen, my Abba. <laughs> I've decided that if I don't do it, if I don't know it, I'm just going to sing a song. Better the Devil You Know by Kylie Minogue. Oh, okay. Don't know Kylie Minogue. If you say so. Yeah, I think that is. Yeah. Um, last one now. Ready? Mm-hmm. <laughs> It's Barbie Girl by Aqua. What is wrong with you today? That was it. It was it, you're right. Thank you. Stick around, because after this, it's more Mike. Mm. And it's that science that is. Welcome back to Chewing the Cud. And now it's time to go over to Mike, because it's not chemistry, it's not biology, it's science that is. That's science that is. Chemistry and biology are both sciences, Lee. Well, it's just words, isn't it, Mike? It's just, just words. Words hurt people. Mm. Words hurt people. They do. Yeah. Um, so it, it's getting late in the year, and, and and the world is starting to quieten down in the world of gardening. Starting to hibernate, isn't it? It is. Um, but now is a, a great time to start to create something ready for next year. Right. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to create something that generates heat. 
heat in the garden. Yes, not a massive amount of heat, but a little bit of heat. <clears throat> okay. So, in front of you, you should have some grass. I do have some grass. Okay. What I want you to do is I want you to make, to, to get that grass and really scrunch it and crush it up and make it into a little ball and then wrap it in tissue. Have you washed this grass? I have washed it in the rain. Is there going to be any wikis in it? Any what? Wikis. Wikis? Wiki insects. Oh, probably some insects and it's from the ground. What am I doing? Just give it a really good crush up, so making sure you're bruising it. I've um, just a little crush. And the smell that you can smell from, from cut wet grass is called petrichor. It's called what? Petrichor. Is that not the smell before the rain? No, it's, af it's the smell of wet grass. Yeah. If you gave that a sniff, now you'd smell petrichor. Mm. Right, I've scrunched it into a little ball. Okay, now wrap it in a little bit of tissue. So you want a little parcel like that, see? A parcel. <clears throat> okay. And what happens is that the little bit of moisture will come out in the, in the grass and that's good. Okay? Because what happens is when grass is, is crushed or cut, it actually is an endothermic reaction. So it actually generates a little bit of heat. Okay? So when you see cows sat down, when it's raining. No. But they can get a little warm bum. No, it's not. They sit no. down because it's, when it's raining, it's to keep the, the, their arses dry. Just sat down. OK, um, I've made a little parcel. OK, now you want to squeeze that into the middle of a toilet roll, OK? Because we want the... OK. Give it a good squeeze. All the way in? All the way in, so it's in the middle. Done it. Okay. Now, what what happens in that in that little tube now? Okay. Hopefully, there's a little bit of a gap around the outside. Mm -hmm. So inside, where, where the toilet roll is, inside, there should be a little gap. So you should be able to see through little bits of it. Yeah. Okay. Good. Because what we want we want little wee beasties to get in and out quite easily. Beasts. Beasties. Like insecty things. Beasts. Yeah. Beasts. Okay, now, you should also have some wet corrugated cardboard. Mildly I, moist, damp. I do. Yeah. What you want to do with that is you want to put the toilet roll to one side for a bit. Okay, and with your scissors, you want to cut an insert, a little square insert, out of your corrugated cardboard. It will fit into your tube. You are. So you want to cut a little insert from your corrugated cardboard. Like that, and fit it into your cardboard tube. Like that. Okay, I want one on the top and one on the bottom. So in, in your little sandwich, you've got that corrugated cardboard. Like that. Um, may, maybe just a little bit flat, so it doesn't need to be squished in. So it's just a little bit, like like a little layer, like a circle. If you want to do a circle, you can do a little square is fine, but as long as you've got a gap around the outside, it's not all crumpled up. Because you want the, the little spaces in the corrugated cardboard. What will happen is they'll trap some of the heat. My cardboard is, is disintegrating. It will do, but it still needs to, but it needs to be moist. I don't want you to have to moisten over here. Mm -hmm. Okay. One side. Not finished yet, Lee. Not finished. No. No. You know, cutting wet cardboard is not particularly easy. I've managed to do it quite quickly. Just saying. Whatever. Right. Okay. I've done that. Okay. So you got. Now what you want to do is get some of your leaf litter. Mm. Okay, and pop that in as well. Once again, to each side. Squash it in. Squash it in. Dirty. Just a little bit of leaf litter. Doesn't need to be a lot. You're enjoying saying the word dirty a lot, Lily. Just saying. Okay. Now, what this is actually creating is creating a compost starter. Oh. So if you then pop this into a bin, okay, with holes in the bottom. All right, and then put all of your, your food scraps in and 
like any newspapers, that sort of thing. Um, any hair, human or dog. Um, basically, as you went round, as it built up, that cut grass would create a little bit of warmth, yeah, that would then permeate the rest of the things and help it rot down and create really good compost for next year. Okay. Well, what's with the face? Very informative, that. Yes, Mike, thanks. It's called That Science, that is. It is! Not This Is Fun. Well, we're doing important things. God here. forbid we should have a bit of fun. Do you want to do anything else with this? This is what you had me do last week <laughs> fill a jar with water. <laughs> and I very much enjoyed that. <laughs> we had complaints about this. No, we didn't. Yes, we did. I complained a lot about this. But what do we do with this now, then? Okay, so um, the last thing you need to do is you've got some dry cardboard from a drinks holder because we don't want to waste anything. And you just kind of want to bung it up. You're going to rip some of the cardboard and put... Were you not paying attention, Gallery? It's a little mini composter. Composter. Compost your face in it. Yeah. Um, so you pop... Do we set it on fire at any point? You can set it on fire if you want. It would create a lot of smoke because it's wet. Okay. But that's not what we do. That's not what we do. Because what happens now is when you pop that in, in with all of your, your food waste and things, yeah, mm -hmm. little worms and stuff will go in and come out and worm poop will arrive. Or castings, oh. as it's also known. Yeah. Could you dry it out and smoke it? You could dry it out and smoke it. I would not recommend it. No. It's not the right kind of grass for that. No. Your marijuana. The marijuana. marijuana. What is it you call it? The devil's lettuce? Devil's lettuce. Devil's lettuce. Mm. Yeah, that's a different kind of lettuce. Drugs are made. Huh? Drugs are made. Okay. Um, <laughs> I'm not saying anything because that would be preachy. Um, but yeah, that's, that's a compost starter and that's science that is. That science, that is. That was, um, yeah, that was, very, that was very school. That was a very school, school science lesson, wasn't it? That science, that is. Yeah. What were you expecting? Well, one never knows. <laughs> one always craves that excitement of, of flames or You're something. not allowed flames. <laughs> Every time we have had flames, you've done something wrong with it. I can't... You can't blame me for your inability to not play with fire. So we're stuck with shoving stuff through toilet roll tubes, aren't we, then? Yes. Well, we, have to go for, we have to go for the level which you can be trusted. Yeah. The stuff I have planned with batteries that I'm not allowed to do. That's not a bit of excitement. I can't wait for that. Yeah, but that's almost the end of the show. Remember to join us on our social media at The Could TV in all the usual places. Thank you for watching, and we will see you again soon. Bye. Bye. The dog probably put all of that in there. Nice. All of it. Is it all from you? You know, your garden? That's from the side of the road. That's from the front of your house. In yeah. The gutter. Yeah, yeah. Nice. The grass is possibly a bad dog. Okay.